So I want to make a video on how to use the GNOME desktop. I've put out a couple videos on GNOME and I always get mixed responses back. Some people really seem to like GNOME, some people have a lot of complaints with GNOME. A couple of complaints I think are a little bit unfounded or maybe they misunderstand what GNOME is trying to do. And so I, I want to pick apart a little bit about how the desktop is organized and how everything works together and then give you like some maybe some hotkeys and tips and tricks on how to make GNOME a little bit more usable and how to tailor your expectations to fit the GNOME workflow. Uh, so off the bat, in a typical desktop like Mac OS, KDE Plasma, Windows, the desktop is the default. The desktop is like where we go to access our programs, where we go to click on files, where we go to organize our windows. Um, but the default, the baseline on GNOME isn't the desktop, which is why the desktop is completely blank. And it's also why when you first boot GNOME, you're taken here to the activities overview. So I think just by retooling how we think about the, the, the default or the baseline of GNOME from the desktop to activities will clear up a lot about how the program is used. So on the activities overview, you have a lot of information available to you. Obviously, you have your expanded or exploded desktop. And on the bottom, you have your dash, which has some pinned programs and an app drawer. And when you open the app drawer, you see, obviously, all of your apps. But coming back over to just the activities overview, the reason why this is the default is because GNOME, GNOME wants you to open a program and begin working. And so once your program is opened, they expect you to be engaged with the program, which is why there's no more superfluous or unneeded data distracting you from your workflow. There's no taskbar on the bottom. There's no like real system tray. There's just a date and time right in front of the screen, right at the top center. And now you're working. And they expect you to be working until you need to change tasks. They don't want you going in and out of distracting things. So if I'm like in a word processor, like let's look, open up um, LibreOffice here. If I'm in a word processor, word, word processor, they expect me to be here word processing. When I'm working, I don't need to see pinned. I don't, I don't need a dash to dock. I don't need a application dock. I don't need a start menu. I'm here to do work. When I need to change my workflow, I go into activities, and I open up something new. And now I'm working on something new. Same thing. If I need to access a file, I don't want to go over to a blank desktop and look for my file, which is why there's no desktop icons or quick launches from the desktop because the desktop in the GNOME environment is just like a clean desktop in the physical world. There shouldn't be anything on your desk except for the things you're immediately working on. You don't need all of your pens and paper clips and staplers and remotes and cell phones and folders and everything just cluttered around your desktop. That's what drawers are for. It helps keep you organized. So your desktop is blank here. It's what you put on the desktop that matters, right? And so I, I think once you kind of begin to see this as the default, the rest of GNOME starts to make more sense. Um, that's also why they have what's referred to as dynamic workspaces. So on this desk, I've got OBS going. On this desk, I have Google Chrome going. On this desk, I might have my terminal going. On this desk, I might have MuseScore going. On this desk, I might have, oops, going a little bit too quick. On this desk, I might have Reaper going. And while I'm working, if I need to be bouncing back between those, I have a dedicated desk for each of these programs. And GNOME doesn't assume how many desks you need, like on KDE Plasma, where I think it defaults to four desktops, or other uh, desktop environments will have a limited number there. GNOME trusts you to understand and use the amount of desktops that you need so that each workspace is unique to whatever it is you're working on. This one might be Bitwarden over here, and, and so on. 
So it allows you just to create them infinitely, which I think is great. And then it also allows you, just so you can see this a little bit clearer, it allows you to send these different um, uh, windows to different desktops. So if I want this one over here, say I need Google on the same one as Bitwarden for whatever reason, I can move it over there. And then once I'm done having Bitwarden and, and Google collaborate, I can move it back to where it belongs. That also is reinforced by the activities overview, where at a glance up here, you can see all of your dis different windows open on each of your dis different desktops. And it allows you to drag and drop those windows between the different desktop environments as you need to. And so there's you know, keyboard ways of doing it, and there's mouse ways of doing it. But the point of GNOME is to compartmentalize how you're working on each of your various projects to minimize the distraction. This is different, I think, than Windows or Mac OS or KDE Plasma, where the work happens simultaneously with desktop aesthetic. GNOME really isn't the sort of desktop that you want to you know, take a screen grab of and post it on Unix porn. GNOME is really a desktop that wants to get out of the user's way to increase their productivity. Windows and Mac, with all of the information constantly available at the bottom of the screen, are fundamentally anti-productive um, desktop environments. You can be productive on them, but they're designed first and foremost with aesthetic and legacy in mind. Aesthetic meaning how pretty and fluid and beautiful is my desktop, and legacy in mind with Windows users in particular. How has the user been trained to use their system for 30 years? And how much do we really want to challenge that paradigm? And so that's kind of where we're at with the GNOME desktop. Now I'm going to close out pretty much all of these. And I'm going to do it the slow way. And as I close these, you'll notice that my virtual desktops start to disappear as well. So if I close them out, close them out, disappears. I can't close OBS because it's recording, but that too would disappear all the way back down to just my first desktop up here. Now this isn't exactly a vanilla desktop, so for some tips and tricks for those of you guys getting going, um, I recommend installing GNOME Tweaks. Um, typically the close button is over here on the right hand side, but I have it moved over here to the left, so that's where it defaults, that's where it usually is. I also have uh, Legacy Adwaita to Adwaita Dark um, for some of the programs that haven't been quite updated to LibAdwaita yet. Uh, and then I do have some extensions in installed, not many. The couple of extensions I have are the alphabetical app grid. So when I'm here in my app drawer, it just defaults to alphabetical order, which I find a little bit more usable than just having them install or having them populate in the order in which you install them. Uh, I also have caffeine installed, which just kills to spend. And then I have hot edge. So over here in the activities corner, usually that's a hot corner. You come over here, swing your mouse. It brings up the activities overview. Um, what Hot Edge does is it makes that down here where the uh, hot bar or where your dash to dock or your dock or your dash or whatever you want to call it actually lives. And so that's just like an ease of use thing. I think eventually over the next couple of iterations of GNOME, that's going to come by default. This is legacy over in this corner because the dash used to be on the side over here. Um, but that's how you use GNOME in a nutshell. Let's talk a little bit about some hotkeys. Um, the number one hotkey you need to start training yourself to use is the Windows key or the Meta key or the Super key. They're all the same thing. So you press that button, opens up activity. I press this button a lot in my daily workflow. Um, just get used to hitting that. Another thing is when you have some programs open, so open up LibreWolf. Open up Google Chrome, and these are both on my first desktop. If I want to move them, I can hold Alt, Control, and Shift, and then whatever window has priority gets moved with the arrow keys. Same thing, if I give priority over here to LibreWolf, I can move that 
around on my virtual desktops. Um, to change between desktops without moving, it's just control, alt, and arrow keys, and you can go. And the last hotkey that I really make a lot of use of is when you come down here to my dash, these are in a specific order, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And that can go on indefinitely. But when I hold the super key and press a number, it opens the program in this order. So I hit super 1, LibreWolf opens. If I were to hit super 2, Google Chrome should open. Reaper is in the third position, so let me come over here to a new desktop. If I hit Super 3, Reaper will open. And again, that minimizes the amount of time you need to distract yourself by coming over here and looking at all these programs that you don't intend to use and just getting to the one program that you do need to use. And let's be honest with ourselves, most of us only have a handful of programs that we're using on a daily basis anyway. And this, I think, is a problem with Mac OS users in general is I've seen their bottom bar, and it's just like, Every single program they have on their computer is on that bottom bar. And I always ask myself, like, how often are you using those programs where they need to be pinned to the bottom of your screen forever? Like, you'll be on Safari just reading the news or something, but you have every single thing from Microsoft Office, they're pinned just staring at you. And, it, and after using GNOME for a while, it, it just kind of seems silly, like, that's so much information that's displayed on your screen that is irrelevant to what you're doing. And I guess that's the best way to si um, I guess that's the best way to sum up the GNOME experience is it's removing the stuff that doesn't matter so you can get going on the stuff that does. So hopefully this cleared up some of um, the confusion around the GNOME desktop and maybe why I enjoy it so much and maybe gave you guys something else to think about before you just needlessly say like, oh, GNOME is unusable because it doesn't have Dash to dock. So it doesn't need Dash to dock. It doesn't need a whole host of extensions. What it really needs you to do is pick the program you need to get going and just start doing some work. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.